We've got more now on President Xi and the SCO Summit. Let's go to Adam Gary in London. He is the director of Eurasia Future, a global policy and analysis center. So, um, Adam, this group, the SEO, represents more than 40% of the world's population security, the main driver of it. What are your expectations for this year's gathering, given some of the current geopolitics in Asia right now? Well, even though, as you say, the SCO was conceived and remains an organization to combat the three evils of terrorism, separatism, and religious extremism, the word of the day and the words that will be spoken, particularly on the sidelines of the summit, will all be about trade and economic cooperation. And that is, in fact, related in a way, and in a very important way, to its original mandate about security. Without prosperity, there cannot be peace, and peace is obviously the, the end goal of any collective organization that aims to create greater security. So I think that while you might see some positive developments in the official statements during the official meetings, it will be very interesting to see what happens on the sidelines of the summit when people such as the Central Asian heads of state meet with President Xi, when the Chinese president meets with the Russian president, the Indian prime minister, the Pakistani prime minister, and of course it's Imran Khan first SEO summit as Prime Minister of Pakistan. This will be very important, seeing as the tensions between New Delhi and Islamabad that had flared up in February of this year. So all in all, there will be a great deal to talk about. Afghanistan very much on the table as well. But overall, it's going to be about how to increase trade throughout this wide area of the world, 40 percent indeed, and how to create greater investment opportunities and other connectivity. One other area that's of great importance is that the host country, Kyrgyzstan, is part of the Eurasian Economic Union, which this year has affected a trade agreement, an FTA, with China. This could potentially be one of the most vital free trading areas in the world. So I think that that's going to also be a very important issue that multiple countries, including the host, will be able to discuss with their colleagues. Adam, you mentioned trade and economics, but we know that there are a lot of big infrastructure projects and the Belt and Road to connect all of these member countries. What progress, if any, has been made since last year's summit in Qingdao, China? Well, the summit was very crucial because Belt and Road offers not just an alternative, but offers the clearest path forward for a kind of cooperation on a bilateral basis that has multilateral results. We've seen the failure of many of many groups, many um, efforts to have multilateral organizations with good bilateral and even unilateral results. Belt and Road has the priorities correct. And in a world where we're seeing uncertainty from the United States, to some degree uncertainty from Europe, Belt and Road is a way for the entire world, but Asia in particular, to increase connectivity on a respectful basis that respects sovereignty, sovereignty and makes the most of all nations have to offer and what all nations seek from a win-win partnership. And Adam, we only have about 30 seconds left, but I want to get your take quickly on, and you mentioned some of the other uh, things happening in the world, the U.S.-China trade war. We also have Iran's president expected to attend the SCO looking for more support from sanctions. What do you think will be the biggest takeaway uh, in dealing with these outside issues in Kyrgyzstan this week? I think the biggest takeaway will be putting words into action when it comes to increasing trade. I think the China Eurasian Economic Union Free Trade Agreement needs much more effort behind it because its potential is so very high. So the more effort that can be put behind such free trading agreements and the more free trading agreements that can be not only expanded but created, the better. So while security might be the aim, the longer and broader term goal is to create peace through through prosperity, that means trade, cooperation, Belt and Road, obviously a major, I would say the major part of that. Adam Gary in London, thank you so much. We appreciate it.